Hi there, this is Carl Hooker and welcoming you to this iPad tips and tricks video. Uh, I do want to point out that uh, most of these tips and tricks you can find in the Apple support user guide just by searching for iOS uh, tips and tools. So feel free to look that up. I'll put a link in the notes. Um, but first, without further ado, let's get started with our first tip. And so to do this, you have to actually have screen recording enabled. Um, and it comes enabled by default, but if I swipe down up here, which is up in this upper right corner, you'll notice that I have it, it is recording right now. If I swipe out, that's your control center. So in order to switch that out, I need to go to the settings button. And if you don't have screen recording built into your control center, it's likely that it didn't come custom, uh, didn't come default. So you're gonna have to go ahead and add that. So you can see here, I have it added already. Um, I could remove it. And now when I swipe down, actually, I don't see the screen record button anymore. It was sitting right over here. Um, so I'm gonna go back down and add it. And you can see down here, you can actually add all these extra tools, things you might need. So I'm gonna add screen recording again. Now I see that I still have it and there it is recording. And so screen recording is a powerful way to show all sorts of things. A lot of apps come built in with recording features, uh, but not every app allows you to record, capture, and send a photo roll, which then of course you can use in any type of other platform or send out to students uh, via LMS or email. So uh, that's how you get that. And when you hit stop, which I'm going to do here in a second, it'll actually save it right to my camera roll. Now the recording stopped, it's saved to my camera roll. I can go back to my photos here. There it is, there's the latest recording right there. And there is the recording of me, what I just got done doing. Um, so I could play that, preview it, send it to students, uh, edit it if I wanted to, if I wasn't happy with it. Um, but you kind of see how that works. And so now that we're done with that, what I would like you to do is go ahead and try to make your own screen recording and see if you can get it to save to your camera roll. One other handy feature that I will mention when you're doing screen recording with your iPad is having some sort of marker. In this case, I have this kind of mouse. Now this is actually an assistive touch button that I've added. Um, in order to do that, you're gonna to wanna to go into settings, go to general. It's actually an accessibility feature. And you may notice um, right down here is something called assistive touch. And so if I click on that, turn it off, you'll notice my assistive touch button goes away. And if I click it on, it's back. If I hold down on this, um, a lot of different things pop out. Uh, you'll see there's some other things I can add. My control center, again, this is for people that uh, maybe need some help with their, whether it be dexterity issues, things with the home button, little extra things. You can actually add all sorts of little menu items to this. I'm gonna tap off of it and it disappears again. But in this case, I like using it because again, it acts as a mouse. So you can actually see where my finger is moving while I'm talking. Again, having this built in with the screen recording is a powerful way to do any type of recorded instructions for students using their iPad pads if you want to demonstrate something, have them focus on a website, um, things like that. I think that's a powerful tool to use as well.
Another feature I'm going to highlight is also in the settings button. So I'm going to click on that and I'm going to go to my accessibility features, which is where I just was. Um, and I'm going to use a zoom feature, which also comes in handy sometimes too. So zoom is a little bit tricky. There's lots of little ways you can control this. But when I turn this on, if I go and toggle that switch on, all of a sudden I'm going to see I have this little loop here, this little lens, a magnifying lens that I can move around. Um, and this allows me to magnify in on certain areas. If I tap on that little, there's kind of this little bar down here at the bottom. If I tap on that, I can actually see that there are ways to zoom in and out. So I can actually maximize my zoom level or minimize it. So there we go, I double tap on it. Now I can zoom in, zoom out. I can change the filter. I can actually resize the lens if I want it to be more of a box, I can do that. Um, tap off of that, double tap on that again. And you can see that I'm kind of zoomed in a little bit here. Um, I can uh, change my filter if I wanted to, to make it kind of grayscale. Um, or um, if I'm not kind of happy with that, I can always do kind of inverted to really ho hold down and focus on things. Again, these are good accessibility features, but they're good ways to also tie into what you want someone to focus on. So let's say that I'm doing a presentation and I want the students to notice a particular website or a particular part of the presentation. I'm gonna use this zoom lens and I'm gonna double tap and get my region um, resize my lens a little bit here. I'm going to stretch it out a tad. There we go. So it's more of a word size. And now I can grab this and move it around and say, okay, I want you to really focus on this word. So again, as I'm recording this, I'm actually having them focus. They can see what I'm focusing on. Um, again, a powerful tool to use when you're combined with screen recording to have students focus on particular objects. One thing I will mention is getting the zoom button um, turned on and off is a little bit tricky. It actually is, uh, you have to use a gesture, which is uh, something you do on the screen. So in this case, it's using three fingers and tapping the screen twice. So it's a three finger double tap. So if I use three fingers and go tap, tap, there it zoomed out. If I use three fingers and tap, tap again, my lens just appeared. So now I have my lens back and forth. So again, this is using three fingers and all three fingers touching the screen at the same time, tap, tap, and you can get it to appear and reappear. The next feature I'll talk about is the markup feature in photos. This is actually a pretty powerful tool that I don't think a lot of teachers take advantage of. Um, we do have lots of different apps and software that can do a lot of this as well, but this comes built into your iPad. So if you combine it with screen recording, which is what we're doing now, you can actually kind of make your own series of videos uh, depending on what you want to get across. So in this case, let's say, let me go to my photos here and I see I have this object and I want to actually mark up this object. Actually a worksheet that I took a picture of. So let me pull up this worksheet here. Now this is just a, a worksheet my daughter's doing, um, second grade kid just doing some work here, color by number, kind of fun. But maybe you want to explain this to, to uh, your students. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit edit. And again, I'm screen recording all of this. And I'll notice over here, I've got a little kind of a suite of tools. So I'm going to hit the little dot, dot, dot and hit markup. And now I'm able to pull this up. And so now what I can do is actually start editing some of these. If I wanted to explain um, some of the answers, I could do that. Okay, so I know that's going to be black. So students, make sure. And also these tools are a little bit different. So if I wanted to, I could take like this, make it kind of a fatter line. Um, I could click on this pen, double tap on it, make it a little more opaque, make it yellow. If I wanted to, to kind of point out certain things, um, click on yellow there. Let me go to 35 like that and kind of work through the problems. Uh, and then of course I can uh, go through and actually color in you know anything that's 35 can I explain it whoa that's pretty big but you get the idea here this is again a very powerful tool called markup and it does allow you to record all this which is great And if you want to save it just as a single sheet you can hit cancel here at this point and not add the markup points 
or keep it. In this case, I'll just keep it um, and send it as an example. But again, a powerful tool called Markup. It's built into all your photos. You, you, those of you that have iPhones probably already know this. There's some editing capability with that. Um, I use an Apple Pencil to do some of this, but you don't have to do that. You can just use your finger or a stylus. Um, and it doesn't necessarily have to be worksheets either. I mean, it could be any type of object that you want to have kids take a picture of, measure it, have them kind of kind of uh, label certain things. A great tool for all of that to have your students label items as well. Um, so go ahead and try that. And again, combined with the screen recording tool, I basically just made kind of a tutorial video, um, just taking a picture of a worksheet and marking it up with a screen record. So go ahead and try that. So go ahead and take a picture of a, a document or an object and then try to go ahead and put labels on it, mark it up a little bit, um, and then see what it looks like. Another powerful tool that comes built in with your iPad is the actual Notes app. And Notes is uh, used to just be kind of a basic, uh, you know, you type in a few things if you want to jot some things down. But now with all the stuff you can do with Notes, you can actually do a lot more than just that. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start a new note. Uh, let me go and delete this, start over, hit new. And what I did is I just clicked on that little button right there in the upper right corner. I can see I can add some text here if I want to, test uh, here. Um, but there's some new things you can do now that you couldn't do originally in notes. Like for once, you notice over here there's a little graph. I can actually add some charts if I want to do a table and have that set up. Um, if I tap on um, over here, I can actually tap on this A. And now I have some other features I can do. I can change my fonts. I can uh, underline certain objects, make them bold, um, start doing bulleted numbers, um, however I want to do that. Um, also do some little uh, right or left justification. Um, and then what I'm going to do is actually something a little bit different. I'm going to actually go in and... Uh, I want to add, let's say I'm making a checklist that I want my students to go through or that I need to go through and say, like, all right, so I'm going to click on this little check button right here. And you notice it puts a little circle there. Um, so this is the first thing I have to do. And then when I hit return, it's going to add a second, another circle. And I can just kind of go through and say, okay, here's my checklist for the day. Um, and then what's great about this is it's actually an active list. So when I go through, I can tap on these and check those off and close them out which is handy. My wife and I do this all the time with our grocery list because another thing you can do in notes is of course collaborate too. So if I wanted to, I could take this note here and hit that little share square button there and I could actually share this note with somebody. Now, if you go into your settings and make sure that you have um, under your iCloud that you actually have uh, notes turned on, you can do a lot of different things with notes. Now what I could do is actually, if I see I have iCloud set up over here, I can actually add a note. Um, I'm just gonna make a new note here, and maybe I'll call this grocery list. Now this is more for personal use, but you can see how this could actually be a powerful thing too with your students. If you wanted to add notes and have them collaborate on things together, you can actually build this note out to actually collaborate with someone else. So in this case, I can hit that little um, person right there, tap on that. And then I can invite someone to look at this list so I can actually send a copy link to somebody. Um, there's some other options here if I wanted to send it on Twitter, maybe drop it into my Google Classroom or my uh, LMS. Um, but then essentially I can add people to the list. And so then whenever I'm adding something to the list and something is added, um, they get a notification and so do I whenever they add something to the list. So again, a good way to make a kind of a collaborative note. Now, the last couple of features I'll show you real quick. Um, you can now add in things into notes, like you can actually add objects. So if I wanted to go into, if I wanted to scan a document, like that worksheet, or take a photo of something, or I can even add sketches now. So if I wanted to, I could just add a sketch of something. Um, so I'll just, something here. And again, using my Apple Pencil, but you could do this with any, any pen or pencil, and you could add more pages right up here if you wanted to. You could rotate it. 
um, export it out. I'm just going to hit done. And now my sketch is now dropped in as an image. And now that's a solid, solid image in my notes that students can pull up if they want to. You can actually, um, if you wanted to, you could mark up right inside the note itself. So right here, I could say, um, I could write as well. A little bit trickier, it doesn't become an object. Uh, now it just becomes kind of a text box. So you have to be careful with that. But there is ways to add that as well. So again, try some of these features out with notes. You can try, get into your notes. Make sure again, if you have your iCloud turned on, there's a lot of extra features that pop up, including the collaboration feature. So go ahead and try that out as well. And uh, good luck with that. Another powerful feature that's built into iOS is the split screen or multitasking capability. So in this case, you can have two apps open at once doing two different things. This is especially great for note taking, but also for doing a lot of other productivity tools. In this case, what I'm gonna show is I'm gonna pull up Safari and there's my iOS user guide there. Got some information here, but I wanna capture some of this in a different way. And so what I'm gonna do is actually go to, I'm gonna use my um, kind of finger and swipe up from the bottom just slowly here to pull my toolbar back up, my menu bar of items. And you'll notice notes is open there, which is one that I'd used before. So I'm gonna click on notes. And this time, instead of just, if I click on it, it'll just open notes, which is great, but I really don't wanna do that. Um, what I wanna do is actually have both my notes and this open at the same time. So I'm gonna hold down on notes this time and drag it up kind of over to the side. And you'll notice what's happened here. Now I've got a split screen view. I can grab this little middle bar here if I wanted to and move it from side to side. If I want perfectly split screen half and half, move it over a little bit. This is especially powerful if your students are watching maybe you on a video, like a Zoom call, and you wanna actually take some notes over on the right. You can be watching the video on one side and then taking notes on the other. Now, in this case, what's also is kinda of neat is uh, if you're on Safari, you can take objects and just move them straight into your notes. So like say this iPad here, if I want this in my notes, I'm just gonna hold down on it and then drag it and drop it right into my notes. And now drag and drop capability is available there, which is kinda of neat. I'll show you kind of a different version of that too. So if I'm going to open up my notes this time, let me go and get rid of that. Swipe out of that. Click on notes. Now I've got my full notes here. I'm going to go back to that grocery list I had. This time I'm going to use my photo roll and bring it over here for split screen. And you may remember I wrote this uh, something uh, note earlier. Uh, that's actually an, an image now. So if I wanted to, I could just save it to my image library by clicking, holding down on it, dragging it right over here and dropping it right into my image library. And now it's one of, it's an image that I can use later. And click on that, get out of there. And you could see it appeared right there at the bottom in my image library. So again, using the multitasking feature, powerful thing, you will notice that certain apps work better than others. So some apps that may, you may not be able to do the split screen quite as well. All the native iOS apps definitely work. Anything with pages or keynote or numbers or a notes, uh, photos, Safari, um, but some additional third-party apps may not have quite the same functionality. So play with that a little bit, try to drag some things from one to the other and use that tool uh, in the future. Again, this split screen functionality comes in really handy when students are doing reports or when you're creating presentations. For example, let's say I'm making a, a I'll pull up a blank keynote here. I'm doing a report on, um, let's say I'm doing a report on unicorns. Now what I could do is go in, go into the web. I could search for unicorns, find a unicorn picture that I want. I'd have to click on it, maybe save it, um, figure out a way to get it from here to my camera roll, back to the keynote. But with split screen, what I can do is drag it from the bottom pull my keynote up and I'm gonna actually move it over to this side because you can do that as well. Pull over a little bit here, maybe right about there. Uh, let's say I want this uh, nice, beautiful unicorn picture. I'm gonna click on that, hold down with my finger. See it lifts up a little bit. I can drag it over. Now I got the green plus, 
drop it in there. Now it's a part of this presentation as well. I can slide that over and continue to work on whatever I want to on this presentation. So again, in between apps, using that multitasking view can be pretty powerful. So go ahead and give that a try too. Try to open up a blank keynote, try to find an image from the web and drag it over using the split screen feature. Another powerful feature that's built into Safari is actually the reader view. So I'm going to look at an article here. This is actually the SpaceX launch that just happened recently. And um, I can see there's a lot of a lot of busyness on this page here. There's clicks up above. There's things. That, there's alerts flying around. There's an ad for blue jeans. Um, there's some, some kind of photos and videos. There's best dresses for older women, which is kind of an interesting one. Lots of information here that's being popped up. But what I want to do is just have the information itself. I don't care about all the videos and the pictures and the links. Um, and so the way to clean this up is there's actually a button kind of up here when I scroll it back up to the top of the Safari page. You'll look up over here and you'll notice those little lines right there. If I click on that, that means that this website can be viewed in reader view. And in this case, I've got it clicked on so I can see kind of how it looks. So if I click on these little A, the little font messages there, if I want to, I can make it, in this case, it's sepia. I can make it black and white, white on black, good accommodations. If I don't like the font, I can change the font. Um, some of these fonts are actually better for students that have disabilities, such as dyslexia, using kind of fonts that actually help weight the letters a little bit. Um, so now let's say I've got it the way I want it. I can even make the letters, make it a little bit bigger if I want to. Now I've got this great uh, readable website with just the information, you know, all the pertinent information that's in it. There's links and stuff that still work. Um, but I want to get this to my students and I can't really send it to them as a website because it'll come up with all that other stuff. So what I can do is I can actually export it with that share square there and I can save it as a PDF. So if I scroll over a little bit, you'll notice that there's the create PDF button. Now, this is a PDF document. It's become gone from a, a Dynamics website with lots of ads and click up buttons to, a, to an actual document that students can read and, and look through. Notice right up here, there's our markup button. So if I wanted to, I could mark up this document, write some notes on it for students to really think about. Students can also do this on their device if they need to take a kind of some notes on a website or some information. Um, and then when you're done with it, you of course can hit the share button there. And if you wanted to, you could share it to uh, Seesaw or your LMS, whatever is linked to your iPad. Um, you could save it to your files um, for later use. You could print it if you have the ability to air print, but basically, or even email it. So there's so many different ways you can do with it. You can even see now we use notes. You can actually send this to notes as an actual document as well. If you want to just save it in your notes, I'm just going to hit done here. And I'm going to just uh, save the file to, um, I'll just save it to my iPad for now. So I'm going to click on, on my iPad down at the bottom and hit add. There we go. And you find a spot for it. I'm just going to add it. I'll put it in my, um, put it in my pages. There we go. And now that's been saved and I can use that for later viewing. And again, if you click on this little button again, uh, the reader view will turn off. That's actually built into any Safari web browser, whether it be on a MacBook or an iPad. So if you ever see those three little lines there, that means the website can be viewed in reader view. This is the same thing with this one. Now, doesn't look much different because Apple didn't put a lot on that. So it just kind of cleans it up a little bit. Again, makes it feel the way you want it to feel in terms of sepia and tone. But go ahead and launch Safari and try to find a couple of busy websites and see if you can go through those same steps. See if you can go um, actually find a website, turn it into reader view, export it as a PDF um, and send it to yourself and see what it looks like.
Another powerful feature that comes built into every iPad is the ability to do text-to-speech. Um, and so if you go to General and click on Accessibility, you'll notice again there's some accessibility features in here. We want to look at the one that's called Speech. And right now they're turned off. Speak Selection and Speak Screen are turned off, so I'm going to go ahead and turn those on. And if you want to, there's actually lots of different voices in here you can choose from. Um, if you don't want the traditional voice, uh, Siri Female, you can choose maybe Alex. Here, that sounds Hello, like. my name is Alex. Some people like Alex. You can actually download different ones. There's Fred. Hello, my name is Fred. A little bit too much like a robot. I'll go ahead and stick with the Siri female for now. Uh, but you can download. There's lots of different voices. There's actually a different accents like Karen from Australia. Hello, my name is Karen. Um, so yeah, let's, let's go with Karen and see how this works. So now what I'm going to do is Karen is my default voice. And I've got speech selection turned on and speak screen. So now I'm going to go back to the web. Um, let me get out of this. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually have Karen read to me some of the things on the screen. So if you actually, uh, you probably know this with your built-in keyboard, of course, when you type, um, you notice the little uh, microphone icon down here. That's uh, speech to text. We're doing something different. We're doing text to speech. So I'm going to hold down and I'm just going to drag this paragraph here. And you'll notice there's a button there that says speak that I can now select. So I'm going to click on that. New, New home, home screen. The home screen, screen has been redesigned, redesigned to take advantage of the large iPad, iPad display. The refined layout, layout lets you see more apps. apps. And, and you can, can pin, pin your favorite to debut, debut widgets, widgets on the home, home screen. See view and organize to debut. debut. So it did read that to me in that accent. But if I also wanted to, I could actually pull down, um, do a two-finger swipe. Apple, Mac, iPad. Do a two finger swipe from the top and I get this extra menu that's kind of a speak screen. So it actually reads everything on the screen. This is great for sight, in, sight impaired students. Um, at this point, if I wanted to, now I have another accessibility feature. I could speed it up if I wanted to. So I'm going to hit play. iPhone, watch, TV. Hit the Music, rabbit a couple support, times. Search support, shopping bag, iPad user guide, communities, contact support, iPad. All right, I'll pause that there. But this is especially handy if you're reading documents, things like that and you want it to kind of be read to you. If you're just kind of getting tired of reading it yourself, you could always do speech selection, have it read the entire document to you. Um, a handy thing for students that are struggling with reading, and it could work on any website. So don't feel like you have to go find some special website tool or app. This is actually built into iOS, so those students that have iPads can have speech uh, text-to-speech read back to them. So I've referenced this user guide a few times. I know there's a lot of great things built in here that I need to learn about, like multitasking, measuring, some things I didn't get to show you. Um, and let's say I want to bookmark this, but I want it to be an actual app. This is something that's come built into the iPad for a long time, but uh, some people forget that you can actually um, use that little share button there and add this to your home screen. And the way to do that is you see down here at the bottom, you see a button that says add to home screen, watch what happens. It actually tells you what it is. It makes a little icon for it, which is kind of new. This is what's new with iOS. If I wanted to, I could change this and just call this uh, my iPad guide and hit add. And magically, you see there, iPad guides now shows up. It looks like an app, but it's actually just a link to the website. So there is another app. If I click on it, now I see that it's launched that website and I can go back into it. And it gives you that kind of same experience of having an app on your screen. So again, I always like to point out if there's some websites that you'd like to go to a lot, add them to your home screen and make them little apps. I think that's a handy tool to use as well.
One other useful tool that I'll mention really quickly is the Apple Maps, uh, which a lot of you may have used for um, when you're using navigation, driving around in your car, but it actually has a lot of educational uses. If, let's say you have students that are studying certain places, geographic areas, historical landmarks. Um, there's a lot of things you can do in Apple Maps that you couldn't do on like, let's say just normal maps. Um, and so right now, this is the normal view. This is what you see with Apple Maps um, when you're trying to navigate or drive through the streets. In this case, we're zoomed in on San Antonio right down the road from me. And I'm going to hit on, um, I'm actually going to hit on this little icon up here. You can kind of see it, this little little eye right here, this little info button. And I'm going to choose a satellite view. And so instantly what's happened is a new button has just appeared right over here. 3D has just shown up. So I'm going to zoom in on San Antonio a little bit. Now um, I'm going to click on this 3D button right here. Notice that the map kind of tilts a little. And so if I wanted to, I could kind of zoom in. Uh, pinch with my fingers, swivel, uh, pinch, kind of zoom in a little bit more. And I notice right away, I see something that's pretty interesting there. Uh, it looks like we have the Alamo. Now, if I take two fingers and drag them up or down, I can actually tilt this screen a little bit so I can kind of look at it from a different angle. So now I can kind of see a different view of the Alamo, kind of a bird's eye view, if you will. So those features are pretty neat and you can actually take screenshots. Students can take pictures of these, add them to their presentations if they want to. But what makes this also pretty powerful is the flyover feature. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom out a little bit and I'm gonna see, if I keep zooming out, you'll notice a little icon there, it just appeared. There's a little 3D button that appeared right there. Now I'm gonna tap on that and when I do, what'll happen is it'll give me the ability to start what's called a flyover tour. And so what this does is you can actually click on, uh, let me zoom out a little bit here. And if I want to, I can actually tap down and hit a start city tour. And what this will do is it actually gives me kind of a guided tour of the city. And so in this case, San Antonio, it's gonna fly me in. I'm coming up from a kind of a high point of view, almost like a blimp's eye view of what the city would look like. And it slowly flies you over some of the landmarks. And as it gets closer to some of the landmarks, you'll actually see kind of the names of these objects appear at the bottom of the screen. So it looks like right now that it's gonna kind of focus right in on the Alamo Dome. And then it's gonna kind of swivel over. So again, these are great tours. You can do these in most cities in the US and also across the world. Um, Paris has got a great view of the Eiffel Tower. A lot of landmarks, if you're doing studies with landmarks with your students, another great tool to use. So this is the map flyover feature. And again, I'm recording all this too with a screen recording. So if I wanted to, I could just record this video and do my own narration and send it to the students as well, just to tell them like the different things that they're seeing on their building. Like say, oh, here, for example, we have the Tower of the Americas and you could give some of the history of why that was built or better yet, have your students do that as well. Have them do a, voice, a voiceover so they can actually see um, some of the things that they learned about when it comes to either cities or landmarks or geographic areas that they need to study. Thank you for watching iPad Tips and Tricks. I've given you a few of the features you've learned about there. A lot of accessibility features, markup in photos, um, using notes, Safari, um, the, wet, the flyover view and maps. Uh, hopefully some of these tools are handy for you to use as a teacher, but also for your students to use whenever it comes to them reporting back to you some of the things that they've learned. Um, so I encourage you to go ahead and check out uh, Apple's iPad iOS 13 user guide, which I'll link here in the notes. And um, I hope you enjoyed these tutorials and gave them a try and had some success with them. Have a great day.